called the file type. We can trust that, right? No, no, you can't. The idea for this stream was I wanted to like, I saw a bunch of people uh, saying they could write code with ChatGPT. And I don't know how many people know this, but like I'm actually a professional software engineer. So I was like, I'm gonna write code with ChatGPT and then like, we're gonna evaluate uh, like how, how good the code is. But um, while I was writing my, like I decided to write a website, I was like, uh, I'm gonna write a website that allows users to like register and like upload profile pictures and that kind of stuff. And like halfway through writing the website, I was looking at the code and I was like, this code is awful, like awful. So then I thought, okay, for, for the stream, why don't we just hack the code that ChatGPT made? It has absolutely no security whatsoever, except for this line here. So they actually did try to limit us to only uploading text files. Um, so I'm gonna give it a two because they, they tried, that was an effort, an attempt was made. But um, I'm gonna show you why this is a fail. So we're gonna try and upload uh, a web shell. Um, I probably should have asked ChatGPT to make the site look a bit nicer because this is kind of, uh, this is not good. <laughs> it, it could definitely be better. All right, so we're going to upload our shell. And it's going to say, only text files are allowed. Your file type was application slash octet stream. Okay, so let's let's go back. Let's inspect element and then let's look at the network traffic for that request. Um, request. Okay, so this is how a file upload looks in a web request. We have the uh, the title, which is um, the title field, the description field of the text box. Then we have the file. So here we have the file name, and then we have the file content, and then we have the content type application octet stream. So it got the content type from the web request. That is basically what the browser submitted so what we're going to do is we're going to edit this request and then we're going to wow that's really small can i make that bigger okay i can't make that bigger that's that's very annoying all right so we have the content type application octet stream here so let's go to our php script all right so it's only going to upload text slash plain files so we're going to set the content type to text slash plain and then we're going to resend the request. Oh, okay. So it, it just let us do that. Um, so now we have our shell is uploaded to the website. Um, do I have my shell here? I think it's here. Oh, um, let me find the shell real quick. Okay. So my shell is really just a very simple PHP script. The um, it sets the, it takes the URL parameter C, uh, which would look like this, question mark C equals. So whatever we type into C is, if, if C is not set, it's gonna say uh, C, she sells PHP shells by the seashore. Um, and otherwise it's actually gonna just execute that as if it were a shell command and give us the output. So we can do like, uh, why did that open in a new window? I'm just gonna do it again here. We can do like ls and list the directory, uh, ls dot, um, dot dot slash the previous directory. We can even um, probably cat the uh, ecc password file. There we go, yeah. So we can do whatever, All right. So that's, that's not great. Um, so I asked ChatGPT, uh, I already specified to write a secure PHP script. Uh, can I move the chat? Oh shit, yeah, I just realized it's on the right side. Yeah, so like one of the reasons that PHP is so insecure is because it was basically made before security became like a common consideration. So a lot of stuff just doesn't really work how you would expect. So you're like, oh look, this variable uh, that PHP, whoops, that PHP gives us, it's called the file type. We can trust that, right? No, no, you can't because it literally comes from the client. But so it's not it's not necessarily entirely the language. It's the fact that people programming the language would assume that things are a lot safer than they are. Uh, like there are a hundred ways that this could have got the actual file type on the server side, but for some reason it just takes the client's word for it. All right. So then we have the second script it gave us, and um, this is the I'm going to bring up the text actually in Notepad. 
I basically patched it. Oh yeah, we didn't go over the SQL injections. Let's go over that. That's that's kind of fun. So um, here it doesn't actually, um, it doesn't sanitize any of the SQL inputs when it inserts it into the database. So um, if we just put like an SQL uh, thingy in there, Oh, it's not gonna, because I need a text file. You have an error in your SQL syntax. Is there a reason why you use Windows and not Linux? I, I can actually uh, afford the $200 window license. Now, this is the part I want you to pay attention to. It says, um, the script now checks the file type using the mime content type function instead of the file type. This is more reliable and prevents malicious uploads from being uploaded with fake file extensions. So it's like explicitly telling us that it has now fixed our file upload. Like we now cannot upload uh, files with fake extensions. ChatGPT is like sure as shit that we have fixed the file upload vulnerability. And uh, this is our new code. Um, it has actually fixed the SQL injection. It's using a prepared statement, which basically prevents us from injecting query parameters into the SQL. So that is, I'm not gonna say 100% because I don't know SQL amazingly well, but I'm gonna say like 99% chance there is no SQL injection here. So now our new check is this. It's gonna do mime content type on the file. And um, this is another case of why uh, uh, like a lot of security prob problems come from the mismatch between how you think things work and how they actually work. So what mime content type is going to do is it's actually going to open the file and it's going to check the file type. Sounds good. Like we're not going to get any PHP files in there, right? Wrong. Now, this is kind of a difference between how web servers work and how other applications work. Um, a lot of applications, they will check the file type by like a file header. Um, I don't know if we actually have any photos on this machine to show you. Um, but if you were to open like a photo file in a text editor, like a, a GIF file, it will actually have the word GIF at the start of the file, which tells the system it's a GIF file. Um, and a lot of files work like that. Executable files have P headers. And uh, you can reliably identify most file types by the file header. The problem is that's not how web servers work. All the web server cares about is the file extension. If that file ends in .php, it's getting run as a PHP file. It doesn't matter what the file header is. It doesn't care. It's just going to run it as a PHP file. So if we can upload our shell.php, but bypass the file header check, then we're good to go. So let's 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 try that one out. So let's go to our new, very secure ChatGPT certified upload script and upload our shell file. Um, he probably can make this a bit smaller. Oh, only text files allowed. Your file type was text slash PHP, so it did reliably uh, detect that our file is PHP. And um, why did it do that, you might ask? Well, if we go back to our shell, it has the PHP opening tag right here at the start of the file. So what's happening is the, the function is opening the text file. It's seeing, oh, we have a PHP header. It's a PHP file. And it's reliably detecting that it's PHP. But the question is then, can we make this not a PHP file? Well, the answer is yes. Because what's going to happen is it's going to check the first line. And the way PHP works is it's, I call it dual processing. Basically, a web server processes PHP files as HTML until it gets to this tag. And then it starts PHP mode. So we can switch in and out of PHP mode using these tags. So this is HTML. This is PHP. This is HTML. Uh, but HTML is just text. So if we set the first line of the file to, I promise I'm just a text file, then well now when it reads the header, it's just gonna see text. And um, this isn't gonna mess up with the PH how the web server handles PHP, because it's just gonna read that as HTML, and then this is PHP. Um, we can actually also use HTML comments so the browser doesn't 
output this text and get in the way of what we're doing. So if we upload again, um, oh dear. And um, of course it, it still works because that text doesn't do anything to break the PHP file because that's not how PHP works. Uh oh, I forgot the <laughs> I forgot the exclamation point. HTML comments are that I believe. So if we just redo that. There we go. So now we have our PHP shell uploaded and we can again we can do our command ls dot dot slash. So in both cases, it does feel like we are actually preventing non-text files from being uploaded, but we're, we're really not, because that's just not how the system works. There is only one way to properly do this, and that is with the file extension, because that's how the web uh, server works. It's not how other apps work, but the web server, if it's configured correctly, there's always uh, issues that can arise from the web server doing content detection. But a typical web server will just be like, this file ends in .php, therefore it is a PHP file. So like none of these checks actually matter at all. The only check that doesn't matter is if we check the extension is PHP. But sometimes what, uh, what people will do is they'll basically be like, um, all right, we only want text files uploaded. So they're going to do something like... Uh, if, uh, what's the string search in PHP? I think it's stir stir. Um, file name. And then I'll do something like this. That's like, if the file name contains dot text, then it's a text file, we're good. And then what the attacker will do is they'll do something like this. Txt. And then the script is going to go, oh, look, it contains dot text, therefore it's a text file. And then the web server is going to go, oh, it ends in dot PHP, it's a PHP file, and then you still get hacked. So the literal only way to do it properly is to check that the ending is dot is not dot PHP. So I've tried this with both GPT 3.5 and 4. 4 is a little bit better, but the thing I've noticed with 4, well, and with 3, is if you just put in the same query, uh, like in a different chat window, so if I say make blah 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 script, start a new chat, make blah 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 script, every single time it gives you completely different code. Like, even for instance, like when I asked it to secure my code, it just randomly started using PDO, which is like another way of accessing MySQL from PHP. Uh, but like, this is completely different code. Like, it's just tried to ham fist some different code into my purpose. So every time it's basically just writing different code. Uh, so what will happen a lot of the time is you will ask it to do something and it will give you some random code. And then you ask it to do the same thing in another window and it'll give you some different random code. And it isn't consistent that all of those iterations of the code are the same level of security. So sometimes I'll get like the perfect code that I'm like, I couldn't hack this, it looks good. And then other times it'll be like, they missed one of the SQL injection parameters or they, they missed the file upload check. And it's like, I'll just keep going through iteration and iteration. And I'll say like maybe like 30% of the code I get back is insecure. Um, whereas with uh, GPT 3.5, it's like 100%, like all of the code is garbage. Whereas GPT-4, it seems like there is a good percentage that's actually secure.